Hello everyone and welcome, this is Common and Cam, and today we're going to be talking about the differences between the test screenings and the final version of the Transformers Bumblebee movie. TFW5 boards member Octopus Prowl attended the test screening of Transformers Bumblebee early this year and shared information, well, early last year. <laughs> it's 2019 already. Now the only scenes in the movie that saw a drastic change were its hard connections to the Bayverse. It's been now noted as a pre-boot this has, and um, like I said in my review, this film doesn't really know if it wants to be a reboot or a prequel, and that's why there's a lot of changes uh, with the final cut, because they're kind of like alluding to that, like, oh, if it is, then it is, and if, if they don't, they don't. It's they're just kind of trying to save themselves a little bit, and be able to take two directions. Instead of just focusing on one direction, they can kind of open up a little bit and decide what they're going to do next. Now going into the differences, it will contain spoilers, so if you've not seen the movie yet, just giving you a good warning now. So starting now, the opening of the movie lacked the Cybertron sequences. In the initial test screening, it had a narration by Dylan O'Brien, the voice of Bumblebee, with a shot of Earth from space, with a quick few lines of exposition from Bumblebee, before we cut to the Jeeps with Agent Burns that entire scene where they're chasing him. So we don't actually see him crash land or have a Cybertronia mode. With him already being on Earth, this was really straightening the connection with the Transformers last night, where it showed you that Bumblebee's been on Earth since World War II. So yes, it opened up on Earth, which is kind of a better because we would have really missed out on that Cybertron scene, which is by far one of the best things in the entire film. So originally it was going to start out with the same scene with John Cena and his crew exercising in the forest, and then Bumblebee is in the forest hiding. We also have some dialogue changes between Mr. Powell and Agent Burns. It was reshot and they removed Sector 7's prior acknowledgement of Transformers, Originally, John Cena was xenophobic towards the Transformers, due to him knowing a friend who was killed by one of them at some point. Yes, I know, I just said John Cena instead of his character name. I can't help it, okay? A lot of his dialogue was reshot in the final version to make him more funnier. He was more serious and a cutthroat kind of guy, kind of the direction Michael Bay would have given him. Which probably explains why he's one of the weakest characters in the film, because with all those reshoots, changing the performance just like that. To John Cena's credit, he probably did a really fine performance um, in the initial run, but having to reshoot and change certain dialogues, that's one of the main things people just didn't like as much. A lot of John Cena's funny lines weren't that funny. Um, there was a few, but there were some that really fell flat. Now going on to the flashback scene when Optimus Prime's hologram appears in front of B, that was in the film, but the actual flashback to when we see him on Cybertron was added. A large scene from the middle of the movie was also removed, a scene that included the AllSpark energy leaking from Bumblebee, giving life to the appliances of a Watson household. There was a whole scene removed at Charlie's house after Bumblebee accidentally overcharged the outlet, and bring several household appliances to life. This causes Memo to call Charlie to come home from work. She returns home and then the two fight off all the appliances and electronics by cutting the power cords. It's over the top, it's kind of like uh, the Revenge of the Fallen scene when all the stuff kind of came to life. The Golden Gate Bridge ending that remains unchanged so when we get the final shot of Bumblebee turning into Camaro following Optimus Prime, that was a part of the original cut. Several other people who attended the test screenings confirmed a scene involving Megatron frozen inside the Hoover Dam was in there. So basically there was a Sector 7 scene between Cena and Simmons and the General talking about how the Autobots must never know about MBE-1, which is revealed to be the frozen G1 styled Megatron, fusion cannon and all that. That has the same aesthetics as the Cybertronian bots from the opening sequence, so this is really interesting because they did do a model of that. So I'm hoping at some point we get to see that either through behind the scenes or concept art, like maybe they'll include that in the deleted scenes. Um, just for kind of like what could have been because there's a G1 stylized Megatron now in the movie we need to see that we have to see that actual design I mean it doesn't make any sense considering how different Megatron was on Cybertron how did he turn suddenly to a G1 style and then when we see him in 2007 he's back looking like he did before it just wouldn't have made sense regardless but still would be really cool to see that design the post credit scenes are later editions, so both post credit scenes were brand new in the final release, those being with Optimus Prime talking to Bumblebee, walking along and watching the Autobots come to Earth, and Charlie finishing her father's car. So this is like the whole pre-boot notion, so the writers, they clearly understand that Optimus Prime and the Autobots didn't come to Earth until 2007, so we decided to make a scene like that just for the fact that, okay, yeah, this is why it's a reboot, because of this essential scene. 
but it still doesn't stop fans confused regardless, but it's just really good to know that that was later added and wasn't actually in the original cut. So Optimus Prowl's summary is that everything was essentially the same between both versions, just cut slightly faster in some places to keep the pace in steady. So they're just kind of excluding all those kind of connections, those strong connections, to really make it on its own and hoping in the future that they will go ahead and like, yeah, this is a reboot or pre-boot as you say, an X-Men first class kind of thing, but I'm sure they're still debating on what they actually want to do next. Anyway guys, that's all I have to say today, I will leave a link to the article so you can check it out, thanks Optimus Prowl and TFW for giving us this information. If you're new to this channel, be sure to like, comment and subscribe and click on that notification bell to get all updates instantly. Until the next video guys, goodbye.